Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today I'm going to show you how to make that really like sort of acid type. It's not really an acid bass line, but it's a crazy sounding bass line. Like lots of weird stuff going on. Uh, we're going to be doing it in Harmer. This is the patch itself. It starts off with some filter movements at the top, so it filters out quite a bit. By the time we get here, filters have opened up. And we get to sort of enjoy this low stuff if we remove the kicks from it. That's the sound itself. So let's go ahead, let's dive into making this sound. How does it tick? How does it work? So at the beginning here, this is the MIDI. So the MIDI is sort of like all over the place. There is this notion of these upper notes. So there's a rhythmic low end. This is sort of responsible for this constant like pulse. And then we have here this descent. Bump, 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 bump. And that's, that's the basic line there, right? It repeats mostly. There's a few spots that have a couple variations, but that's the MIDI. Um, let me go ahead and make a copy of it. We'll, we'll work on the sound from this perspective right here and worry about the changing stuff later. So I'm going to go to pattern four, open up a new Harmer and set it to be default. I'm going to copy this. Let's, let's just make a new pattern and copy that MIDI and paste it in. So again, if you want to copy the exact MIDI, there you go. This is the MIDI that I, I settled on. So let's go, let's pop this in over the same spot and we will mute the top clip for now. And we'll set up a loop here. Okay, so in reality, this is like all that's happening. This is gonna be a little loud, so let's turn it down just to begin with. Yeah, so that's our sound. Uh, maybe make it a touch louder. Okay, so first move we're gonna do is use the pluck knob. So this essentially is just a low pass filter that comes down on every note. So if we just set this up and bring this up, we already have a great base of a sound. Now there's a couple ways you can vary this sound that will be interesting. The first is we can move from a saw to a square. And I actually do that in the track at these moments. So the, the square comes through a little bit more. Yeah, they're just, they're very temporary. There's one in the middle of this as well, if we, if we listen for this, this automation. That, that motion is a square motion. Yeah, very nice. So let's go ahead and, um, whoops, wrong button. Unmute these. So you can vary it that way. Let's go ahead and just like create a little automation clip. So maybe we won't build out a full little sequence, but we'll get the idea. So we'll do the same thing here. So this right here will be a square wave. We'll see it uh, switch over for a second. And that, that small difference can make a, a big difference when you start stacking effects. So with that done, let's go for the main thing that's creating sort of this unusual rhythm. And that is in the effects, the distortion, I am using the sine crush. And interesting things happen when you move the amount up and down. So if we create an automation clip for this, that by the way is what all of this stuff is. And it's largely just experiments. So let's, let's start with a low amount and then go up to a high amount. And then let's have it come down really quickly so it's within the length of the note. So you already hear that motion, that whoop sound. That's cool, we wanna capitalize on that. Let's set it somewhere in the middle and on these two, um, let's do something, let's see if we can get two in here. Whoops. Uh, hold alt now, there we go. Something like that maybe. Yeah, and then we'll open this up a little. In fact, I'm gonna do something a little bit fancy and copy this. So I'm holding shift and clicking off to get this like, this grid thing. And it's gotta be the, what is this, the right shift? It's gotta be the right shift um, in order to get that specific tool to pop up. Yeah, why not? Cool, we'll, we'll go with that sort of motion. I know it's soft right now. We're gonna deal with that in a second. 
Let's um let's have a one of these double double hits, maybe something that comes down somewhere in the middle and then pops up and then comes back down. Just for some variation. And then we'll have it open up right here. Okay, so you could spend a long time fine tuning things. For the most part, up here in mine, they repeat, but there are, like you could see here, there are changes occasionally when, once you have a sequence going, you kind of get a vibe for, okay, this one needs to be a little bit different to make it just keep, keep it being interesting. Uh, but you don't want to go too crazy. You see, it's very much the same most of the time. There's two main sequences, this one and this one. But every now and then, I toss in something small, not, not too frequently, um, just because I think musically it works out. Like right here, this is before we change. And this sound is so, the rhythm is very complicated, and the sound is so crazy that I don't need to be too insane with this, uh, changing every single bar. There's already a lot to sort of digest. I feel like if I go much further, it'll just be hard to uh, enjoy the sound because <laughs> your brain will just not know what to do with the amount of information it's getting. So anyways, um, this is our sound. I think that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead. Next goal is we have some nifty motions like that, like neat little, like that whoop sound there. That's dope, but we want to bring it out now a little bit more. So let's go over to the compressor, turn it on to heating. We'll bring the amount all the way up. I don't remember what I did on the first one, but this is what I'm going to do on this one. I'm going to bring the low out. We simply just don't want the low very much. Let's bring the high and mids up. And then we might bring in the mids as needed. That's pretty nice. On the reverb, let's go ahead and turn this on. Now there's a bunch of different ones. I went for W+, which I think stands for, uh, oh, it's warm. I thought it stood for wide, but it's apparently it's warm. Uh, I'm gonna bring the size way down, the diffusion way down, and the decay way down. So it's gonna be a very tight verb. Maybe bring it up a little bit. And if we take a look here, what's going on inside. So this is where we might choose to make this a little bit longer. Now, the motion that this has uh, will be very different if the sound sustains through it. It really sounds cool when the sound is decaying while this process is taking place. This up-down, um, if there's a volume change during it, it sounds cooler. That's one of the things that the sign crush just sort of does good. So we want to be careful with making the pluck too long. So there's it, like, very long. And you see, we get variation, but it's very different. And we don't have all the cool little glitchy stuff. It's more of a sustained tone now uh, where, the, where the distortion isn't, like, moving around because the level that's hitting the distortion is very much the same. So let's go, let's bring this and find a spot somewhere in the middle. I think that's pretty cool. And we get that top note uh, real nicely. I actually really like that. So this, we've got a lot of this very, very high-end stuff, and there's actually a cool, a couple cool things you could do with it that I didn't take advantage of in the little demo. Um, the first one is there's this randomized phase for the oscillators. If we make the phase running, this will make it so that this just starts at a new point on every note, um, but all, like spectrally, all the harmonics are still lined up. It's just the entire waveform starts at a new phase. And that could be cool. <laughs> You get a little bit more variation. That's the variation I used in, in the original. If we go over to spectral, this will randomize every single harmonic in the sound so that it's all different and you get a much snappier high end. This could be cool to automate uh, slowly. So maybe at the beginning of the track, if you have it like filtered and stuff, you can, you can do that, it could be kind of cool. Uh, another thing I did, but you may or may not, depending on how you're using it, um, I brought the filter down and just sort of got rid of this like really, really high stuff. I didn't think it was necessary. I think I was even more aggressive on the one I did, but um, that's that's mostly the sound. There are, there's a few more, there's always more you can look at. Uh, for example, here, since we're messing with a filter movement happening very quickly, the blur control, if we open up the blur's opening, make it really long. 
you can sort of see what the blur does. It, it slows it down, blurs it. So there's some interesting potential over here for shenanigans. Uh, I did mess quite a bit with unison. I tried giving it a few voices, bringing the panning and the pitch variation way down. So it's just more phasiness and then messing with where this is. But uh, this didn't have much of an effect, at least on my initial one. You can use it as a way to dial in a specific tone, but this is gonna be uh, much more subtle. It's not gonna be like, I think a main feature other than to dial in a specific, a specific tone that you might like. We have this no more. And if we pump it way up to nine. Now it does get uh, pretty cool when you start panning and adding pitch variation. And it becomes this this wide thing. Now, I was not a big fan of the wide thing in this way, uh, but I did try out a chorus with a high depth, and I can't remember what I did with the speed, but you could just mess with this. I wound up going with the chorus on this one. Might bring the spread down. And that's basically the sound. I did experiment with some post effects ideas, but most of them wound up just reducing the clarity of all the cool little glitches. So I wound up not going for those. Um, compression is probably the other thing that you might want to go for um, that, that could really pull the sound together a little bit. But I really like where this sits right now. We got a good amount of bass coming in. We can always mess with the just built in compression we're using right here. Let's go ahead and then just toss in the kick. So we'll grab a, a kick here and we'll put that in, paste it. Got our variation. And all I did to make it work throughout the track, let's leave this like randomly in here. I think this might be cool. Like how, how does this work with the original? It's very different. I think it, it probably not the move to move here, but we'll leave it in there for now. Um, there's a, there's only a few big sweeping moves. So you notice this is the square wave thing, you know. So that's that's no surprise we did that here. Um, but we have here the filter. So there is a filter that is closing down over time. This is a high pass filter. So the low end will enter as this goes down because the filter's cutoff is going down, letting more of the low frequencies through, and this was a bit touchy. Uh, it took a little bit to get it to, you know, fit just right. And then there's the pluck decay length. And we saw here, setting up the sound, the pluck decay length, uh, if it's too long, it doesn't let, uh, it becomes too static. Like the, the distortion doesn't react the same way. But if it's too short, uh, we didn't look at too short. But yeah, if we make it too short here, then it doesn't, it's just too short to have time to do anything. If we make this like really short. You still, it's still a cool result, but it's uh, that's that's too short, I think, for some of it. This would be cool as like a variation. So automating this would be kind of a cool idea. So that's what I did here. It starts out shorter, and then it pulls up into the region that I actually wanted. And um, let's actually let's let's put the other one back. So let's mute all this stuff, bring that one back, and then finally to to wrap it all together, there is a kick drum little sequence that pops in at the top here. In case you're wondering, this is just a kick. And it's been, it does one of those, a little pitch down. We hit a note just below it, and then it pulls up. Do, 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 boom, done. Uh, I, I think it works really well as like a, a way of transitioning into adding a kick. And it has got swing on. So that means that when I place two notes that are 16th notes, uh, it plays with a swing. They do not play like, uh, like, and, uh, they don't do that like one E and, uh. You go like do 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 do. They do they do a swing instead. That's why do 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 that that kind of a thing. That's swing. So if you write the exact same MIDI, you've still got to get the swing value in there as well. Just like a, a heads up. But anyways, that's the entire thing right here. That's how you make that sound. If you want to make something similar, you can. Uh, let's give it one more listen.
If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day. Thank you.